National Identification System signing ceremony for the contract for the digitization of public records. I'm Naomi Francis, your Master of Ceremonies, and this afternoon we expect to have a very brief signing ceremony. This national identification uh, system is the most important uh, signing ceremony, in fact, and this is an opinion, but I think it's buttressed in fact, that will take Jamaica to the digital, technologically uh, sound highway system. In fact, Jamaica desperately needs a single identification that our people can rely on, and this is it. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, may I ask you to stand for the playing of the national anthem of Jamaica. standing is Mr. Richard Delapena, the PR and marketing coordinator of the NIDS project, comes to give us the opening prayer. Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for health, for strength, for all the many blessings that you've bestowed on us throughout this week and throughout this year. We ask that you, as we do the signing activity today, that you may come within our midst Guide the proceedings, guide the moderator, guide those who are about to speak. This is our prayer, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And so, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, the Honorable Floyd Green, Member of Parliament and Minister Without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Audrey Sewell, the Permanent Secretary at the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Mr. Benjamin Rosett, the modernization of state specialist at the Inter-American Development Bank in Kingston. Mr. Mervyn Eyre, the CEO and head of Fujitsu Caribbean and Latin America and his delegation. Mr. Charlton McFarlane, the chief executive officer of the Registrar General's Department. Dr. Warren Vernon, the program director for the National Identification System and the NIDS team members, members of the media, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As promised, this is going to be a very brief ceremony, and today uh, being a Friday, but I don't know what's so special, but I can tell you the Prime Minister's schedule is exceedingly hectic today. And so let's turn over for official greetings from Mr. Benjamin Rosette, the Modernization of State Specialist at the Inter-American Development Bank in Kingston. Thank you very much. Greetings to the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister, and Honorable Floyd Green, MP, Minister of Health Portfolio, Office of the Prime Minister. And all, pro all protocols being observed, please allow me to just make a few brief remarks on this most positive occasion. At the IDB, we strive to support economic and social development throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. And in recent years, digital transformation has emerged as one of the most powerful tools to achieve those goals. Now, when you look around the world, there are a, common, a couple of common themes that unite the most successful national digitization drives. And two of them are embodied by the NITS project. The first is the creation of a universal, unique, and secure national identification that allows individuals to identify themselves both in the physical and digital context. And fortunately, we are just months away for that for being a reality here in Jamaica with the creation of the National Identification Card. Now, the second key element to digital transformation that I'd like to highlight, which is why we're here today, is the digitization of core registries. In any country, there are three registries that are more important than any other 
for the building of the digital economy. And those are the registries of people, businesses, and properties. <clears throat> a wealth of information is included in these registries, and when they're digitized, they allow for transactions to flow and for a digital economy to be built. Today, we're celebrating the signing of a contract that will digitize perhaps the most important reg registry of all, births. This work, in addition to the intrinsic importance of allowing individuals easier access to their birth records, going back 90 years, this will set an example for the still daunting challenge of digitizing paper-based records throughout government and society, which are, of course, still predominant. Congratulations to the government of Jamaica for this important, miles this important milestone, and in particular to the NITS team. For the IDB, it is an honor to support you. Thank you. Mr. Rosette, thank you so much. And indeed, this is the example for all of Jamaica and certainly the rest of the world to digitize, modernize, transform Jamaica and set the example, especially as we celebrate Jamaica 60 this year. Another one of our partners is here with us, the CEO and head of Fujitsu. If you say it too fast, you can say all kinds of different things. So the CEO, go slow, everybody else who's coming up after me, the CEO and head of Fujitsu Caribbean and Latin America, Mr. Mervyn Ayer is here to bring greetings as well. Mr. Ayer. Thank you, Naomi. Honorable Prime Minister Holness, Minister Green, Permanent Secretary Audrey Sewell, distinguished guests, members of the press and citizens of Jamaica, because we have to be brief, my direction from my colleagues is to stick to the script. So I'm going to be doing that. It is with immense pride and truly an honor to participate in the occasion of this contract signing for the digitization of vital records for the Registrar General Department. On behalf of Fujitsu, we are very proud to have been selected as your trusted partner after a very, very rigorous uh, selection process, which was competitive, yeah. and look forward to working with the Office of the Prime Minister, the NIDS Project Office, the RGD, and all key stakeholders to ensure the successful delivery of this very important digital transformation project for Jamaica and our citizens. If you research Fujitsu, you will see that our purpose globally is to make the world more sustainable by building trust in society through innovation. Our business is entirely built around this, and my colleagues here and myself are actually measured by the extent to which we do so. At the core of this purpose is the vision for what we call trusted society, where we work with government and organizations by implementing and innovating trustworthy technologies to solve social problems together. To transform into a more um, trusted society, we believe we need a step-by-step -step approach that strengthens digital resilience at the core, delivers greater value to society through digital innovation, and ultimately, create a new value through digital ecosystems. What the OPM has embarked on through this, this project is fundamental to this process. Most importantly, at the center of this idea are people and citizens. And the digitization of uh, vital records in a safe and secure way is a critical dependency in realizing a more trusted and resilient society, especially in the context of the lessons learned from a global pandemic. So in summary, Fujitsu do not see this project just as a technology project. We see it as a pivotal step in digitally transforming the public sector to deliver citizen-centric services faster and more securely. Secondly, we are connected to this initiative, not just through the governance of the project, which will be robust, but through purpose to contribute to the sustainability of society. Thirdly, we do appreciate that the context of this being a key element of the NIDS initiative, not just to support the, the creation of a digital ID, but to lay the very foundation of a digital ecosystem to deliver societal value. Finally, our people, the people who will be working on this project, will execute 
with the same pride and purpose that we put into ensuring the trust to be selected. PM, you'll be delighted to, the, um, to know that while this project leverages our experiences globally, the team that will execute on this, on our commitments, will be leveraging the best of Jamaican talent who themselves will be beneficiaries of the outcome. I'd like to thank you for the trust and confidence you put on us, and we look forward to working with you as we change society we live in. Thank you very much. Mr. Ayer, thank you so kindly. I heard you say that Fujitsu is committed to executing this project with excellence, and that is critical, especially as we move toward ensuring we have, a, in other words you used, a fast, secure, trusted, robust, purpose, uh, purposeful, and sustainable uh, your needs going forward. And the central issue you pointed to was trust. And certainly I'm sure the Prime Minister will talk about trust because everything the Prime Minister does uh, is to build trust in the Jamaican society to ensure that we can execute the policies and programs of the country. And a man who has been given the task to put some energy, uh, put some youth, and certainly some thought behind getting this project done is a man who really does get the job done. It's been four decades in the making trying to get through uh, to have a digitally transformed society. And here we are today, and the man in the office of the Prime Minister who's leading the charge under the Prime Minister is none other than uh, the Honorable Floyd Green, the Minister Without Portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister. Please make him welcome. Thank you very much, Naomi. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Angel Holness, Mrs. Audrey Sewell, our Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Benjamin Rosset, our Modernization of State Specialist at the IDB, Mr. Mervyn Eyre, our CEO of Fujitsu, Mr. Charlton McFarlane, CEO of the RGD Department, of course, Dr. Warren Vernon, Program Director of the National Identification System, other members of the teams, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon, everybody. Did you say it with a smile? Today, we take a significant step forward in our digital transformation journey. A lot is often said about our national identification system and how it will enable us to have a central identification card which will provide a foundational digital ID for our citizens which, as you have heard before, is critical for us to be able to unlock our digital society. But sometimes as we focus a lot on our national identification system, we lose sight of the fundamental changes that we are making and the overarching program to develop a truly digital economy and a truly digital society. That is what we're here to forward today. And this program is undertaking the digitization of two million vital records of Jamaicans. Records relating to birth, marriage, death, adoption, and deed poll that we have at the RGD. Clearly by digitizing these records, we will be able to make the processes at the RGD much more efficient, We'll be able to enhance our services. More importantly, we'll be able to have our people save money. We will be improving the lives of our citizens. You know, the Prime Minister has outlined a massive vision that we at the OPM have taken on in relation to our digitization and our transformational efforts around services, processes, the decisions we make and around data sharing. And all of this is backed by the fact that when you digitize your economy and your society, your country does better. Your people do better. In fact, we've seen reports from the World Economic Forum that a 10% increase in digitization leads to a 0.7% growth in GDP per capita. Again, more importantly, it leads to the betterment of lives of our citizens. So today, ladies and gentlemen, marks the completion of a 24-month journey. 
a 24-month journey that put us through a national and international procurement process to find the perfect partner. In fact, the procurement process started in June 2020, where our project executing team received expressions of interest from 14 local and international companies. They subsequently received proposals from four companies and a seven-member panel, including non-voting technical experts from the IDB, conducted the evaluation exercise, and Fujitsu Limited emerged with the highest technical score. They will install the necessary infrastructure at the RGD's head office to facilitate the digitization of records created from 1930 to the present. But there's a critical component to this program. Not only will we be digitizing the records, we'll be also incorporating our youth. So in this project, we will be utilizing young people who are graduates of our Heart Trust NSTA HOPE program that Fujitsu will train on the job to become leaders in the digitization process. I think that element deserves a big round of applause. So for us, we are moving to ensure that we treat with some of the shortcomings that we've identified in some of our bureaucratic, bureaucratic processes across government. We're looking to ensure that we are more efficient. We're looking to ensure that we cater to the needs of our citizens. We will increase the overall efficiency of the RGD, and we will ensure that more of our people do not have to journey in to the offices of the RGD from the nice, nice places like St. Elizabeth <laughs> to be able to access the services of the RGD. So when I say we're making a fundamental step today, we are making a fundamental step to truly transform Jamaica into a digital society. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Minister Green, for your kind remarks and, uh, of course, uh, alerting us to the fact that there are some big wins with this signing today. It will increase efficiency. It will improve, generally, the Jamaican society. And yes, people from places like St. Elizabeth won't have to come to nice, nice Kingston and Spanish Town uh, to get their uh, birth records, but can, with the touch of a button, uh, get it done. And so that equals transformation. That equals modernization. That equals improvement. And a man who had that vision from the very start, really, to improve what I call Project Jamaica is the Prime Minister, the most honorable Andrew Holness. He's a big thinker. He's a visionary. He's committed to getting it done to transform and develop Jamaica from what we call developing world status to developed status. Ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister of Jamaica, the most honorable Andrew Holmes. Thank you, Naomi. As we celebrate our 60th anniversary of independence, uh, there is a well-known festival song written by Eric Donaldson. I will not attempt to sing it, <laughs> but you may know the words, and if you are so moved, please don't be inhibited. This is the land of my birth. I say, this is the land of my birth. I say, this is Jamaica, my Jamaica. This is the land of my birth. However, the question is, uh, what do you have to show that this is the land of your birth? How do we establish that? Uh, we are facing this question all the time uh, in the strangest of occasions. Um, persons are oftentimes sent back to Jamaica because they have violated the law of another state. Uh, and uh, there is sometimes uh, uh, a contest as to whether or not they are Jamaicans, though they claim to be Jamaicans, but we have no record of them being born in Jamaica. Uh, and indeed, uh, there are many, many Jamaicans today who 
have no proof other than they are here that this is the land of their birth. So more and more, however, as our society becomes ordered and orderly, uh, the need to have documentation uh, and proof of status is becoming increasingly important. Documentation and proof of status is becoming important for access issues, access to the financial system, access to the education system, access to the health system, access to all kinds of services. Uh, not on the basis that these services are exclusionary or exclusive, but on the basis that we have to be able to account for the beneficiaries. Uh, because it is the same public that says everybody should be get everything freely who then turns around and says, how did you spend the money? Uh, so documentation uh, and verification of status is important for public accountability. And as the public demands greater accountability, uh, so to will the need for proper documentation and the ability to verify status, that too will increase. So what we are doing here in Jamaica in creating the basis for the digital society is absolutely important. Yes, there are a great number of persons in the society who have not yet fully understood what we're doing, uh, don't see the big vision of what we are trying to accomplish. Our job is not to leave them behind. Our job is at every opportunity to bring them along into this digital world. There is great fear that this unknown world is just one big bother. And why do we need to do this? Why we don't just live as we have always lived? The, the challenge is that our society is becoming far more sophisticated and complex. And as a society becomes more sophisticated and complex, in order to reduce the complications of accountability, security, uh, and, uh, and in these days, security is a, a big concern. You have to introduce technology. So technology doesn't complicate things, or rather technology should not complicate things. What technology should do is make complex tasks simpler. So when we say we're digitizing our economy by introducing technology, it is about increasing our capacity to serve and take on complex functions in a simple way. That's, that's what we're trying to achieve. So, for example, we would have introduced uh, in the 2000s a new on paper secured birth certificate. Uh, so some of you would remember that. That's the blue certificate with the security measures. It's almost like a shiny seal on it. And that was obviously the first attempt to ensure that uh, as births are recorded, the birth certificate is generated almost immediately. And that generation of the document is stored digitally in a computer. So you have the digital representation in a database somewhere, but you also have the physical copy which you can carry around. And there is some amount of trust in it because it has these features that are uh, not easily converted or subverted. So that, I think we would all agree, would have assisted in our 
the ease of doing business in our society. Many Jamaicans wanted to get this birth certificate because it formed the, 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 the basis on which persons would then go on to uh, formalize their identity as most entities before issuing any identification would say bring your birth certificate which is to establish that you have some entitlement some rights in Jamaica uh, and uh, it has worked fairly well so far uh, as a member of parliament I can attest I pay for many birth certificates and the hot commodity uh, and I have insisted being the minister responsible for this um, don't think it's Floyd <laughs> I've asked Fly to, to, to take the reins on it now. But um, I've insisted upon them, even in the pandemic, uh, the RGD, to make the services available, oftentimes free of cost. And I'm reminded that the RGD is not one of those entities that gets anything substantial from the budget. They are self-financing. But nevertheless, we see it as a public good to ensure that birth certificates are provided. So what are we signing here today? Why are we doing this, this, um, this contract signing? And why should the public pay attention to this? So we probably would now have about 20 years of computer-generated records. But we would have had maybe a hundred years or more. In fact, we probably have about 200 years of paper-based records that are sitting somewhere in a vault that though we have tried to secure them, uh, they are still at risk and uh, many of them are deteriorating naturally. And if you wanted to get your birth certificate, uh, and let's say you were in you know, my age group and uh, older, and you went to the RGD for your birth certificate, uh, don't mind that you see them typing in your name into a computer. That's just typing in the request. Somebody has to literally now go in the vault and go through the hundreds of thousands, millions of records that are there to find your birth certificate. That is a laborious process. It is inefficient and oftentimes it could be hit or miss. I have known cases where when they go into the vault, they come back with tense birth certificates because the names are spelled similarly. Uh, they are very close. Something might be an error, but you can't rule it out. And so they have to you know, spend a little time deliberating on the number of certificates that they have found to say, all right, which one really is it? It is just not an efficient process compared to a digital process. So when the business process is natively digital, meaning that it starts digital, there is usually the assignment of a unique ID. And by the way, that's what digital means. Digital means that there is a binary assignment of a unique number to an event. Uh, and therefore, you don't have to be sequential or ordered or stacked in any particular way because the event is uniquely identified. Uh, and we're doing that unique identity now with the NIDS. So every record that is generated, which creates what we call a civil event, a birth, a death, weddings, change of names, um, those events can be uniquely identified to the individual that created them by virtue of the needs. So we don't have to worry about duplication of records right across government's records. 
Now, for this contract signing, we're focusing, obviously, on the records of the RGD. But the records of the RGD form the basis of our civil data. So what we are trying to do now is to go back in time for those records that were not computer generated, that are paper based, that might have a lot of errors in them, they are at risk of any kind of natural disasters or are internally deteriorating, that we can now go and first of all um, scan them and create a digital image of them. And uh, not only that, as was being explained to me, that we will make the digital image intelligent, meaning that you can add codes to it that will support what is called the metadata, which will give explanations. Uh, so when you are searching, you have more um, power to find the right document. And that is what this contract is about. So this contract will truly bring our civil registry into the modern world. Now, that's, you know, that's the first order of service, the, 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 the first level of benefit of having that ability to bring our data uh, into the digital world. But it then gives you the opportunity to create other services on that. Uh, some people would have heard about Ancestry.com and all the other um, services for finding persons and making connections. If you have this digital civil registry, uh, you would be able to search it and make connections. Um, data scientists would find this uh, you know, a veritable um, you know, incredible collection of information, genealogists and sociologists and all kinds of people would want to look at this treasure trove of information to help to reconstruct our history, to find lost loved ones, to increase our connectivity with each other, and even for health purposes, when you have to start to look at um, tracing diseases and so forth in families, uh, the opportunities are endless to use data to improve governance, health, education, security, and just general how we live as a people. So, uh, you know, I'm very happy that we have reached this point. It has been an incredible struggle uh, because, as you would know, there are those in our society who are, you know, can only be described as Luddites, that they resist any change, resist technology, uh, and are always saying that something bad is going to happen. Uh, nothing bad is going to happen when we know more. Right? We will use information for good. It is when we are ignorant and in the dark that bad things happen. So let us try to get as much data as we can, not being naive that in the same way that paper-based data is at risk of being stolen or destroyed in fire or being eaten by termites, so too is a digital information at risk of being stolen or misused. And therefore, when we are doing this kind of investment in technology, it is not without the proper data security both for the privacy of the individual, and the government has invested heavily in ensuring that there is the Data Protection Act, that we do have one of the strongest public key infrastructure available, um, and, you know, the best that technology affords us right now and our money could buy, uh, to ensure that your data is safe and will not be misused or mishandled, uh, and that when you want it, you can, you can have it. So we are moving forward bravely into the new digital world, and we are bringing every single Jamaican along. So it is my great pleasure to be present at this contract signing. It is indeed a fulfillment of the vision that we have given to the Jamaican people to create a digital society.
Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Indeed, we are moving forward brave and bold. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I told you it would have been a short ceremony, and we are now ready for the signing of the contracts. May we have the contracts on at the head table? And of course, our partners, uh, Fijitsu, will be signing. Uh, the permanent secretary, Mrs. Audrey Sewell, will be witnessing. Uh, I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon. Thank you, P.S. So the Prime Minister will witness P.S.'s uh, signature. And of course, we invite the head of the RGD, Mr. Charlton McFarlane, and the program director of the National Identification System, NIDS, Dr. Warren Vernon, to also look on. And of course, our major partner uh, as well, the Inter-American Development Bank. And so you may be... Sure, yes, indeed. May I just remove this for a second? No. All right, good. All right, and so, so now we can begin uh, with the signatures on this very historic day, which will move Jamaica and or certainly the RGD's data to the digital highway. All fully witnessed and the documents are being exchanged. So those signing, the CEO and head of Fujitsu Caribbean and Latin America, Mr. Mervyn Eyre, the Minister Without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Floyd Green, along with Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness and the Permanent Secretary here. And so we are Mr. Airy and the Prime Minister is having a few words with Mr. Air. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we can do the now symbolic handshake and exchange of the contracts right in front. Yes. And so, please, Dr. Vernon, you can come forward as well. No? All right, no, go right there. Yes, Dr. Vernon, uh, Mr. McFarlane, and of course, uh, Mr. Rosneth. Mr. McFarlane, can you come on this side, please? All right, that's fine. And now one big photograph to make sure that we seal all of this afternoon's proceedings in the history book. the official signing now of the National Identification System contract for the digitization of public records. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please. And so now we thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, or Minister Without Portfolio, the Honorable Floyd Green, and all those here present for this historic occasion. We thank you so much for joining us here at Jamaica House, and we look forward to seeing you again at, on another occasion. Good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.